Welcome back, everybody. This is actually take two, little technical difficulties in the background, but I am joined by, and I'm, I pointed the wrong way twice. You'd think I'd get it the second time, but I'm joined by a special guest that you may recognize from before. We're coming off another 1K at Red Caps Corner in Philadelphia. Set two big tournaments are already underway, and we had a lot of spice, including Craigslist, which we're going to talk about. But Craig, before we jump into the list itself, you're on Kylo Yellow. I know a lot of people were excited about it pre-release. A lot of people seem to have fell away, but you ended up on this list for this event. So what was the preparation like? Like, How did you end up at this spot? Uh, so I got there, um, ironically, because uh, Kylo Ren is my uh, favorite Star Wars character. And um, I fully committed. I, I, I went and brought the showcase. Um, and... Here we are. I started on Kylo Red. Um, there were a bit of flaws that I was um, running into on that uh, four drop turn. And uh, after looking at other color choices, we wound up with uh, yellow. And Makes sense. I was talking to and played against a few of your other teammates that were there at the event, and they didn't end up on Kylo. So did they regret that afterwards? <laughs> did they all want to switch to Kylo afterwards? <laughs> Uh, no, um, they more along the lines made um, the choices based off of uh, meta calls that you know, we discussed and talked about. Gotcha. You were on stream, so I'm going to have to go back and watch a number of those games. They're all up, at least on my YouTube, and we're, I think you were on the Golden Dice podcast stream as well also, right? Yes, um, round five, yes. Yeah, against uh, Gar Saxon, right? Correct. Okay. Well, we can probably talk about the matchups as we get into the deck list, which we can switch over to now. So as I was mentioning earlier, a lot of people were on Kylo, myself included, and I almost audibled the night before kind of thing, almost literally, to a different version of Kylo Yellow. And I think the tweaks that you have here are incredibly intriguing. So let, let's just talk about them in grouping. So can you explain the one drops? Like, I think most people are going to go, yeah, that makes sense. But like, why are they here? Okay. So the one drops are um, basically uh, attrition based. So if you think about um, what I was saying when I was talking about Kylo Red, uh, the issue that I was having was turn four. Um, by turn four, uh, my opponents would usually, they would trade pretty well. And then it came time to, okay, there's, you know, I can flip Kylo. Um, I have the uh, fallen lightsaber in hand, but how do I get him to, um, how do I get my opponent to make their move? Because they, they wind up with the force chokes in hand, the takedowns or the four lumps. There are a host of cards on turn four that essentially make your leader um, toast. Yeah. So, um, what I did was we started out um, working uh, from turns one, two, and three. And I found that the more action economy you get, the better your chances are by turn four that your opponent has to reveal what their intentions are so that you can make the correct read or play. Makes sense. So the more one drops that you have, the more you can just stay in your turn and continue to get your opponent to figure out, get your opponent to make its move on what, what they're going to do. Yeah, eventually they're going to have to tap out or claim or something like that, and then you have your window to actually get Kylo suited up and swing him for the fences, right? Correct. Correct. I mean, that makes sense. And I think to that end, there are other pieces of this. Like If we move from the one drops, although I do want to give special attention to reckless gunslinger before we move on did you kill anybody with that on the day like they were at one health uh, so, and you got them <laughs> so um as there i got them to like 29 i basically um put them in a decision you know a situation where they couldn't win the game at all basically yeah, they got that reckless the dilemma would have you know pinged them you know for 20 from 28 to 29 um and you know it's already going to swing for two damage while i still had units on board Makes so sense. it was just there for the extra pressure. Gotcha. As, as well as the idea that it's smuggled, it, it can be smuggled. Of course. So yeah. if you're not doing anything and you you know need to get things out of your hand for Kylo's effect, 
is pitch effect is not hindering your hand. Right. That makes you sense. Yeah, and in the version. Oh yeah, it, the versions that I was leaning towards were more one drop heavy. They've kind of peeled. We were talking about this on site, but they've sorting. T- I think I'm slowly migrating closer to something you have, but I don't think I would have gotten there if I hadn't spoken to you. So let's let's continue on with the the two drops there. I mean, we can leave sneak attack because I think that kind of pairs with some of the later stuff. But the Correct. I think the spacers are the most unique thing. The Kylo's ties, yeah. Okay, it's a good spaceship and it's early. The Viper probe droids present a three on the front, but what sold you on the the spacers over? Well, there's a lot of two drop options. Okay, so for the the two drop, um, the cartel spacers um, they act as a uh, pseudo defense mm. as well as the offense. And it, again, if you know you're going with the ratio of being able to drop a uh, a one drop. Um, Cartel spacer already, if you've dropped the spaceship on your turn one, um, it presents more of a threat in space to make your opponent know like, hey, I can be serious out over in space, so you might have right. to check it. Or if I get like a Greedo online turn one, you can just drop the cartel spacer and tap a unit and therefore further put in pressure on your opponent because now um, if you're going in that race mechanic, you're doing three damage where your opponent's not able to uh, remove the threats off the board. Absolutely. Um, as well as there, um, it's, it, it plays into a nice little combo piece with uh, the Zandu blood. Um, true. A cat Bane ship basically it's allowing true. me to um, further tap down my opponent's resources or uh, units if need be. Right. Yeah. I've, I did that in a lot of set one with the spacer playing, Mono Boba, so I can definitely attest to the idea that you disrupt your opponent's turn, especially here where, and I should have asked you this at the beginning, uh, if you go turn, you have the initiative, you go Greedo, they play a guy, claim, they you spacer their guy, meaning they can't trade into the Greedo. Did you find yourself then powering up Greedo or powering up units in general with Kylo, or did you feel your hand was emptying naturally and you never had to like go out of your way? No, it's a uh, it's a natural uh, progression um, because there's you know in this format um, there's a lot of yellow um, there's still a lot of um, a lot of control um, the only uh, deck that you can really like um, safely just um, just power a unit up without your opponent reacting is probably Sabine Wren so yeah. right like the Sabine Wren is trying to race you right? Like they're not, they really don't want to trade. So I would just like power them up to make them make a decision. Like, Hey, uh, this, this Greedo will be swinging for five. It's essentially going to be the same thing as the Kylo that you're trying to ambush. So, right. uh, the only time I would kind of power those up is if I wanted my opponent to think about those ramifications, like, Makes okay, sense. I'll power the Greedo up, you know, do you want me to lose my Kylo or do you want to just take this five? and then wonder if I'm going to bring out Kylo. That makes sense. Yeah, and I could definitely see that working out. I know from my experience playing this deck, it was shocking that how much Sabine in particular had to be the control deck. You were, were and again, my version was different, but like, you are way faster, and that's shocking to them. That's exactly um, the front that it did. I only powered them up once my opponent um, exhausted their resources, once I knew it was safe. Makes because you'll walk into you, you you're walking in and you have the potential to walk into any type of ECL play, any type of waylay. Absolutely. So you have to be careful of those. Only time I if I powered a unit up, it was either because they tapped out or because um, I wanted my opponent to be reactive to me powering. Absolutely, yeah. That that all follows. So the the one because I don't know why Swoo DB does this, but it always put. I guess it's because of like the aspects and the the neutral ones end up on the end, but mercenary gunship always feels like it's hidden. That's also part of the two drops. Has, did that, in my experience, it's been spectacular. I think I've had one stolen once, maybe in dozens, maybe hundreds of testing games. Did it, did it ever come back to bite you at all on the day? Oh yeah. Uh, so, well, no, it didn't bite me okay. um, at all uh, in the tournament. Um, because it's so matchup specific where it can bite you, like as you stated, yeah. Um, it that card 
I don't play it against Boba Fett because they have so many extra resources that they'll be willing to take the, the unit. So yeah. I don't play it in Boba Fett. Um, essentially, like any deck that ramps, like I, I'm very hesitant to use it as well. Yeah. So like I've, you you ha- that's a card that uh, when you're playing against a skilled player, um, it definitely presents um, opportunities um, for you to lose. Aside from the two drops, you have some, I mean, these pumps, obviously you want Surprise Strike, that's showing up a lot. Uh, Fallen Lightsaber, you mentioned earlier, and I think most people realize, yeah, an 8-7 Kylo on his deploy turn is pretty good. Uh, Arm to the Teeth has shown up in other Kylo lists that I've seen, but notably, maybe the absence is more surprising to people. What steered you away from Han Solo's gun, the DL-44 hotshot? I'm looking at it as if you can see the ground is a secondary choice for me. Yes. It's really the space. So the ground is the secondary choice. And I don't want to put any uh, emphasis on like the ground units mm-hmm. if if not needed. And it's pretty it's a pretty tight um list. Yeah. So I just like, okay, if it's secondary, the the main card in there is arm to the teeth because it's universal. Right. Between the two. Yeah, getting that counter buff. Somebody had caught me with that at top deck, I think, like several weeks ago because they were trying a different variant to this. And Arm to the Teeth can really get you out of nowhere sometimes because people aren't always prepared. And like you were saying earlier, if you can delay your relevant actions, whether it's the deploy, it's the pump, it's the Arm to the Teeth, and then all these, your opponent claims and they're taking a million and they just yeah. can't recover. Right. So that's exactly what it does. Do you have any other thoughts on the on the pumps or any anything along those lines? The DL forty four blasters would have been in, mm-hmm. uh, um, but um, like I said, I found arm to teeth to be better for both sides because you never know what side you're going to dominate in, and the deck is very resilient in the ability to be able to switch sides. So that's why I would rather go for the arm to teeth, but it would have been in in favor of. Um, what uh, my favorite uh, tech choice is in that sneak attack. Well, sneak speaking attack, of definitely speaking of sneak attack, we're probably getting to that subject because that bottom line with all the space, the triple dark raid, which is I think self-explanatory when you have this much space, and it's not even just like you were saying in the three drop plus because you also have the ties, Kylo, the the gunship, the spacer. It's a lot. It's a lot of things in an arena that I think many decks are soft in. So, correct. Tell us about the the space units and where sneak attack fits in here. Okay, so again, um, as you're pushing all that damage, um, the sneak attacks um, are really specifically um, for control decks because um, around the around turns one through five, they can only remove one character or play one character a turn essentially. Right. So they're spending their turn removing the one to two threats that you're dropping a turn and you're still being able to push out damage or whatever the case may be. So if you play the sneak attack, they can't make up the damage and usually the sneak attack is coming from a unit that's already dealing maybe between four to six damage by itself. You, if you have a Kylo pump, that's eight damage. So the sneak attacks are there to be able to push damage where the control player just can't remove those units out of there. But uh, the sneak attacks are definitely um, just game enders. They close out. Sure. Um, You're you're sticking between um, the the, uh, Ruthless Raider or the um, Xandu Blood. Uh, You can also do the, um, the... the TIE Fighter, the three-drop TIE Fighter, I forget his name. The Lurking TIE Fighter. The Lurking right? TIE, yeah, yeah. Uh, those, yeah it, that, that's swinging for four. So it's just like a lot of um, a lot of pressure that your opponent just can't deal with. I think it's free damage. Yeah, they, well, that's exactly what I was going to say, is that it's, for me personally, I keep I kind of keep forgetting Sneak Attack exists, and then every time you or somebody brings it up, it's, yeah, that this is, for most intents and purposes, the villain aggro for a cause because it's like this is your burn spell and that was always the struggle when i'm trying to build this stuff is 
I can push a lot of damage, but if they get over the hump, they've immediately locked the game, where Sabine still has some semblance of a late game because, oh, I just draw two for a cause and kill you. Here, sneak attacks are doing exactly that and maybe doing more damage because if you sneak in a Ruthless Raider, they're going to have a really bad day. Oh, for sure. <laughs> All the time. All the so people are, of course, going to ask about Xanadu Blood. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, but how did that perform for you on the day? Is it just Raiders 4 through 6, or is it like you found a lot of utility out of the ability? No, it's just the... Uh, well, it's it, it's an awkward spot because, again, it's, especially like when you're playing Control, mm -hmm. um, they're like looking for, um, you know, like um, this set gave them a lot of um, different choices when you look at things like uh, fell at a dragon or takedown or something like that and it sneaks and it puts them in an awkward spot because they're, they might be looking for something where they can fell a dragon and it's just like right underneath and it has that raid to where it sneaks up so yeah. they have the wrong uh, r removal spell in your hand and, gotcha. you know what I mean like so um, in the card like I said it's where this deck doesn't really have too much um, well it's really, it's really lacking in defense mm -hmm. those are the type of cards that help you you know, create some type of defense. Oh, yeah, you can definitely break a, a race scenario where if they're ahead, you space her, then you Xanadu Blood, maybe space her again on the following turn, and, like, their whole offense is right. stunted. Especially with the sneak attack, you know, because the sneak, the sneak attack allows it to come in play, mm -hmm. you do the Xanadu Blood effect to tap something, and then it attacks, and then you tap something, so... Exactly. Um, that's, like, that's a lot of utility, which I, I'll i admit, I kind of wrote the thing off. It felt very clunky in other decks I tried it in, but you're selling me on it here. Like It seems like it has some, some real potential in this list. Uh, yes, and I get just, just being able to make sure, like the consistency standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, I one of your videos, you talked about the, the aesthetics, right? And if you look yeah. at the way the list is structured, again, it's all three ofs. And then there's the two sneak attack. It feels good to me when I see one. like it's just threes. It's just threes. I don't. I don't know. It's maybe from Magic yeah, years ago. Like yeah, you gotta. I like those nice clean lists. When I start seeing one ofs and two ofs everywhere, it's like it's like nails on a chalkboard. But I I get it up here in here. I don't. It it feels weird. But anyway, digression right. aside, what about the board? Did do you feel that because we're running what's the extra sneak attack? Outmaneuver, which we've seen in more space-focused decks, waylays, disabling fang fighters, and we talked about this at the event, but Kylos, which are really sweet. Take us through, yeah. like, what were, you, what were you thinking? Did anything overperform or underperform out of this? Again, um, I really wish I had uh, space because um, the Kylo run would definitely be inside of the deck uh, as a main deck threat, especially, like, uh, we're, you know, we're coming off of last week when... Um, there was a lot of hype with um, the Blue Han build. Yeah. And um, the six drop Kylo is just, it's, it's in a weird spot because uh, a lot of hero removal, when I'm, and I'm referring to like their force users like Luke Skywalker or Vader, there are a lot of units that just can't take Kylo down because of his, set, uh, his seven yeah. health. And just slapping at Kylo just turns off your opponent's turn when you're trying to press for a game. And they have to remove the units that are already on the board. And then, um, you know, when you're talking about um, sneak attack, just bringing in, um, bringing him in through a sneak attack, uh, it's just brutal. Um, oh, absolutely! It, it wins so many, wins so many games doing that. Yeah, I, I was actually boarding them. I was playing Bosk, but I boarded them in in a number of matchups. I only saw that like got him to hit play once, but he 100 percent won the game. That he showed up yes, in. Yes. And I could definitely see right. it because you have a much easier time getting him out there with sneak attack. And to be honest, if you connect once for eight, like yeah. that has to end the game, right? Like <laughs> it's an enormous amount of damage. It's a game. Yes. It, I, so it's very, it's very helpful in those decks that like to heal. Um, and you're just trying to like break through that, that little wall. Right. And they're not expecting eight damage. Yeah. Nor, nor do they have the resources to deal with something that they didn't, you know, expect to come out and be able to attack for eight. Absolutely. I I get the feeling because we've said, I mean, well, I get the feeling we've said it a number of times. You've said it a number of times that 
people didn't expect a lot of these things. Sneak Attack is very apt, both as the card and the descriptor, that people were not going to be able to appropriately prepare their turns, their sequencing, for the threats that you're presenting. It's like, oh, well, I could anticipate that you have Ruthless Raider, but you sneak attack it out, and it's like, that's way too soon. Or the same with Kylo right. or Xanadu Blood or whatever else. So, uh, is But coming back to the sideboard, was there... Like, did you utilize the whole thing? Do you regret any of the, or would you have made changes in hindsight? Anytime that I touched the sideboard, I, I went, I, I just went right back into it because the, the deck was firing on all cylinders. Mm. Um, there was, so I, I really just didn't want to mess up the uh, attrition. But uh, the only matchup that I like use the sideboard for um, was my Kira Green matchup. Um, and that was against my uh, teammate, um, Jamal. Um, and again, that's just making sure you're fully, uh, fully invested on sneak attack in that matchup because they can't, they can't deal with it. Yeah. I mean, the Raiders on their own, they, in any of the blue X matchups that I played throughout the day and through testing, the Raiders are the workhorses and you have, well, with Kylo's like eight ruthless Raiders. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I, I have to imagine that it's a nightmare from the other side, but speaking of of Kira yeah. just in general, uh, whether it's Kira, the Sabines, or any of the other popular lists, where what ones do you want to see and what ones do you want to try and dodge if you ha had the option? Uh, so in the first iteration of this deck, um, um, one of the major, one of the main choices that I switched uh, from, I was using Dr. Evazan, where you see the, you see the Viper pool trait. Uh, the Dr. Avazan, uh, I found um, if my opponent didn't have um, any way to deal with Dr. Avazan because shielded units are an issue. Yeah. You know, they're still an issue. In the game. Um, if you drop a Dr. Avazan and they can't deal with it, um, you win the game. But if they resolve and they collect that bounty, you yeah, you're, <laughs> you're having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I uh, switched that out for the uh, Viper Probe Droids. And that was, you know, that was probably it for the, um, for the uh, changes. Because one of the decks that I found, uh, just to go to your question, yeah. one of the decks that I found an issue with, with Dr. Avazan was uh, Yellow Boba. You know, Yellow Boba, it- Makes sense. It was very easy for them to collect that, that bounty. So I definitely had to switch up. This deck, it outpaces a lot of decks. The only decks, like I said, that I was really worried about were, you know, Han with healing. Before I, like, I made the changes to the deck, I was having an issue where they would just continuously out heal what I was doing. Gotcha. Um, so then that's when, that's when I tr uh, put the arm to the teeth and the arm to the teeth in, and um, I went low on the one drops so that I could out attrition them and if they ever worried about my hand I just had a bunch of one drops in my hand mm -hmm. to where it never you know if they tried to um force throw me or something like that yeah they took that little turn off it punished them right right so and they, and all if you see the majority of the three drops besides the ruthless the reckless gunslinger and the tie fighter mm -hmm. majority of stuff is swinging for three so yeah you know what I mean like you're just playing the card and and and, and punishing them so again, to answer your question, um, if the, the, the matchups that are like pretty tough that you have to um, play um, very well uh, are Boba Yellow and Han Blue. Um, those are probably like the, the, the matchups where it's just a little tough. I could definitely There's see no that. Issue. I mean, yeah, we, we mentioned it earlier, but you kind of run over Sabine. Obviously, it's a card game. Things can happen, but like you kind of demolish Sabine. I imagine Kira, because, not just because of the speed of the deck, but also the particular threats, you're probably blowing them out yeah, of the water lot, as well. It's a lot of it's a lot of dodging. Like they'll, you know, they're 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 trying to hold the um, uh, what's the blue card that negative two negative twos? For oh, the, uh, the make an opening. Yeah, make an opening. Yeah. You're trying to play the make an opening, but then you can play around the make an opening. Like you have several plays to make to where they. You know you're you're dodging them. Yeah. Then they they have the animals on the ground, so you just go space, and then they only really have the the, the only space answer that they have is the um 
the Inferno Four. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's a really hard time for them. I'd imagine. Yeah. I it's interesting you'd mention the Hans because I haven't seen too many lately, at least. And they are, of course, floating around running vigilance. Although I guess they can also similarly run, make an opening to get the ties and heal and stuff like that. Outside of the healing, were they really contesting? Like, was it because the particular units they were able to play to keep pace, or is it strictly just the healing? So, no. Um, the issue is um, where we're talking about the deck lacks in defense. Mm. Um, you don't really like. Unless you're creating that ground arena, and the most for the most part, they win the ground arena, right? Yeah, yeah I'd imagine. They're, they're, they, stick an early, they stick an early Yoda or, or early um, Kanan, and those are all healers, and you're not really interacting with them. That's so where it they, comes you, in, gotcha. And, and, as I, and I said, it, it, you know, as, as with the playing skill, like, you don't want to waste... It puts you in an um, a awkward psychological... Um, disadvantage because you can't pump with Kylo because they'll pillage your hand. Right. Right. Um, so you can't, so the units that you have on the other side of the board, mm. you can't pump up and then they also have restore. So it's just like, that's a fair point until you get to, until you get to that seven, um, that, uh, redemption play. But as stated, that's where the arm to the teeth comes in. And when you arm to the teeth, one of those guys, they start getting, you know, you that's a plus two and then another plus two for another unit yeah. and then that's when you start to outpace so they have a sentinel ship and then um obi-wan can lock down yeah the ground for kylo to come um to come out so they have they have a a a, a favorable match in um against the yellow version but the red version it just like like it eats its lunch mm -hmm. and that's where i would like i said i i, kept, I if anything happened last week i just definitely uh, kept trying to revert back to red only because that deck won the previous week. Um, gotcha. I can't remember what it what it won, mm -hmm. and and that's where I was just like having struggles. But when I created this list uh, in testing, I was going like nine and three against that deck, and I was like, oh, okay, so I, I'm I'm fairly ready for anything that that came up. Yeah, that makes sense. So looking back on it, were th are there any changes you'd or what are you looking at going forward with this build? Any adaptations or do you think you've, you've kind of got it locked down barring like you walk into a room and it's 100% X or something like that? I mean, well, nothing's 100% in card games, but um, I, I would definitely probably look to find a way for the um, Kylo to come in the main deck. And another card that I've been looking at, um, you know, um, when we were talking about bouncing ideas off the guy who I played, um, who was playing the deck on Monday, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a card called Swoop Down. And that yes. card um, is it's very beneficial, especially to uh, the issue that I was having. So if I was having an issue with Blue Han again, I would 100% be looking um, at probably uh, putting uh, some Swoop Downs. I think that makes sense. Side. Yeah, it would probably help address because your, you know, like Seventh Fleet or even Lurking Tie, hell, Mercenary Gunship could crash in and clear out some of those restore right. guys that you were talking about. Right, 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 right. But that's yeah, that's that's basically it. You know, I think that the deck is it's 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 pretty complete on the what we currently see, what we're right. currently seeing in the meta. Yeah, there's so as the meta changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll go through changes, but it's a solid deck. Yeah, it definitely feels like it is the, I was going to say unsung hero, but maybe it's unsung villain. I don't know. I mean, it's Kylo, so he's he's <laughs> sort of sort of on, he's treading the line, but uh, it definitely feels as though it has not gotten the appropriate level of attention for the amount of threat it presents at this stage. So like you said, we, we're still early in set two. You got the qualifiers, showdown season, all that fun stuff. I fully expect that next event I show up to, there's going to be people playing your version of the deck now. <laughs> yes, I would, I would definitely, and, and if that was a question, I would definitely take it to a qualifier, and I think that you would do real, uh, really well. I One thing that we didn't touch on that I want to throw in at the end uh, is that we discussed this a little bit at the event. I was debating on my deck, and I was uncomfortable with it coming in and was leaning towards Kylo, not completely because of this, but a good 
percentage that because it's an aggressive deck, it does have an oops, I win factor where if your opponent, even if they're a good player and they're playing a good deck, the aggro decks are inherently, as we talked about earlier, with all the three ofs in here, they're just going to be more consistent and you are more likely to be able to do whatever your game plan is, whereas other decks can just trip and fall flat on their face. So I really like the idea of this Kylo list because you can, I know I'm going to do this game in and game out, and then I can free up some brain space to to adapt to what my opponent's doing as opposed to maybe, well, this hand is garbage. I need to pack it up and immediately go to game two <laughs> with something else. Right, right. So I just want to throw that in there towards the end. But uh, any other final thoughts or any shout outs or anything? Where can people find you? That sort of stuff as we close up. Again, we're still uh, we're still off the grid. Um, I definitely like to uh, make a shout out to my teammates, uh, Jamal, Adrian and Kevin, um, some excellent testers over there. Um, they definitely helped me um, in my considerations and um, just making a fine tuned deck with all the, uh, the testing and uh, playing that we're doing. Great. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Craig. Thank you again. And congratulations. 5-0 run with Kylo. And to be honest, it was in impressive fashion. People were messaging me offline and they're like, what is that on stream that is just demolishing everybody? <laughs> because you you weren't even leaving pieces for people to pick up. It was, it was just crushing people left and right. So again, congratulations and thank you. And to everybody out there, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments because I I know you were checking him out last time, Craig, so he'll be in there, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, take care. Thank you, Craig. As always, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and tune in next time for more Random Thoughts.